I became aware six or seven years ago of the greening, global greening phenomenon. So now we've been told for 60 years that as the carbon dioxide rates increase and the temperatures inexorably rise, that what will inevitably happen is that the semi-arid areas will turn arid and the deserts will expand. But what's actually happened, and not just the opposite in a little way, the opposite in an absolutely mind-blowing and unequivocal way, which is what's happened is that because we're actually in a carbon dioxide drought, which is also what your data point to, we're down to about 430 parts per million and plants start to die at 150 parts per million. The plants are literally gasping for, metaphorically gasping for breath. And so they have their stomata open too wide and that means they lose a lot of water and that means that the semi-arid areas in the earth are wider than they should be, larger than they could be, could be. So now carbon dioxide levels have gone up and not even that much. And the consequence of that is that the plants are thriving in comparison. And this has happened over only a 20 year period. And so the, the amount of the earth that's greened since the year 2000 is equivalent to the total land area of the United States, right? It, not only that, there's been a market improvement in crop production. It's like 13 to 15%. So not only is the planet not des desertifying, it's doing the opposite and near the deserts, right, in semi-arid areas. Plus, instead of that being a threat to food production, it's actually enhanced food production worldwide. So my sense is that if we weren't ideologically addled and we were looking just at the straight data with the, with the eyes of, let's say, new investigators, we'd look at the release of carbon dioxide of the of the plant-based carbon dioxide sequestration from the fossil fuel reservoirs as the return of a necessary nutrient to the atmosphere, and we would consider it a net positive. And so, what do you think about that? Is that, like, I just can't draw any other conclusion. When I found out that the the area of green on the planet had expanded that much in 20 years, it was, well, it was, I didn't know what to, to, to think of that because not only does it indicate that the desertification by carbon dioxide hypothesis is erroneous, it's actually the opposite of that. It's literally an anti-truth, the notion that carbon dioxide will cause desertification. And it seems to me that environmentally oriented people should be thrilled that the planet has become substantially greener and that agricultural land is more productive because it means we'd have to use less of it. So, you know, I've gone so far as to delude myself into thinking that adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere is one of the most effective ways we could possibly distribute fertilizer. So given that we need to burn fossil fuels for all sorts of other reasons. And so that's so far away from the current narrative that it seems like a delusion. So what do you think of that? What do you make of that? You studied well. Um, yes, it, that's the, that, all of what you said is absolutely true. And many of us, like you and I, know about this. And it falls on deaf ears for some reason. And, and I go back to uh, burning witches and throwing virgins into volcanoes. Um, People did these things, and the rest of the people accepted it or even supported it. And so, I, I, what is it, some kind of collective death wish? Because the fact is, during the most recent glacial maximum, as I like to call it, 20,000 years ago, CO2 sank to 180 ppm in the atmosphere. That's because when the oceans cool, they absorb more CO2. And when they warm, they outgas CO2. I, I use the example of taking a glass of cold water out of the fridge and putting it on your counter. In a few minutes, bubbles begin to form on the glass inside. That's the mm -hmm. gas coming out of the water. Put it back in the fridge, they disappear. So Henry's law is, the, is an actual scientific formula that determines the equilibrium between CO2 in the water and in the atmosphere. And given that the water is 70% of the land's area, this is a fairly major factor in things. And so it went down to 180. And as you know, at mm -hmm. 150, plants die. 
right? So it is thought that many of the high elevation plants did die for lack of CO2, because as you go up, the air thins out. So right, 150, right. 150 parts per million becomes a lower number as you go up. Yeah. And, and so, because the, the, there's ash, de, ash deposits at those altitudes that seem, seem to be like pervasive. Uh, that, and I think that's a, a logical uh, conclusion. Uh, I mean, in, in other words, it, it's not a bad hypothesis because uh, it was so low. And, and, and so I say that human emissions of CO2 are a salvation not a, not a not a destructive tragedy or a emergency or a crisis it is actually that we this species has not only figured out how to build airplanes and spaceships and computers but we have also reversed the continuous downward trend for the last 500 million years with a few blips up and down in between but for the last say 150 million years, it's been a steady downward line. Starting with, regards to, with, with regards to carbon dioxide percentage. From 2,500 ppm 150 million years ago to 180, 20,000 years ago. And when we came out of that most recent glaciation, it took about 10,000 years to get up to what's called the Holocene climate optimum. Because the first 10, the first 5,000 years of the Holocene were warmer than it is now. The Sahara was green. CO2 was a little bit higher. It went up to about 280 after the after the, the 180. The warming of the oceans caused outgassing and made it 280 by the time industry began. And then industry has taken it from 280 to 425 or 6 or something right now. And it just keeps getting greener, but, but the Sahara is not green yet, uh, right? Because it, it isn't Although as I've read warm yet. The, I've read that it's shrinking on its southern expanse. Yes, it is. But uh, the the fact is, there are do red dots on maps showing all the villages that were all across the Sahara Desert with goat herders and sheep and stuff, like back then for for thousands yeah. of years. And one of the reasons they say the Egyptian civilization began was they all had to move into the Nile Valley uh, because it, it was the only place where there was enough water to live and the Sahara became a desert 6,000 years ago or 5,000 something like that but anyways that's the time when when uh, everybody had to move, move and and that created one of the first big urban centers along with the Middle East 